Hi, thank you for tuning in to the Fair Fighter podcast here. My name is Dr. Chandra Smallwood. I talk about all things anxiety when it comes to my life or just other parts of life, or if anyone has a request, that too. Today I'm going to talk about anxiety and having a toddler. I'm going to talk about it in a couple different ways with me and also her. So, okay. When I was pregnant with her, right now my daughter is three. She turned three in March. So that was two months ago. When I was pregnant with her, I did not have any anxiety. With this pregnancy now, I don't have anxiety. I mean, I haven't had anxiety recently anyway, but with her, I did have anxiety for a long time before her. Um, but then when I got pregnant, it tended to disappear. And that is not the case for most women who are pregnant. Usually anxiety, well, I don't wanna say usually, but a lot of times anxiety will increase for a woman um, while she's pregnant. Um, but yeah, not everyone's the same, right? Um, we all go through different, different signs and symptoms. But when I had her, <clears throat> I had her, I'll make the story really short. I had her when COVID started. So I went into the hospital maybe March 17th, something like that, 16th or 17th, and she was born on the 19th. So between the time I got in the hospital and the time I came out, everything was shutting down in Los Angeles. So when I went in, everything was like, you know, I mean, COVID was, it was coming, but we, have, we hadn't shut down yet. Um, so people weren't wearing masks in the hospital or anything like that. You just couldn't have lots of visitors. You could only have one person at a time. And they had to like sign in and out. Anyway, it was a lot. But when I got out of the hospital, it was like a ghost town, like everything was dead. I remember when we got out, I wanted something to eat and like the only thing open was like Starbucks, the drive-thru. So we went to the drive-thru, Starbucks. And you know, it, I had, I, I came home, it's the pandemic just gave birth to this brand new little baby um I got home and fear kind of set in um a week later I my parents were there because I really needed their help with this baby because I didn't know what what I was doing and I was sleeping and I remember just feeling my heartbeat slowly like hitting the mattress but like really hard. I was like, something is not right. So I, my mom's a nurse, so I had her take my my blood pressure. Well, first I had her, she listened to my heart and she was like, you know, you're fine. It's whatever, my heartbeat was maybe like 50, which is low, but it's, I guess, you know, it's not like crazy. Um, then she took my blood pressure and my blood pressure was super high. Like 180 is like 180 over 100, something like that. It was like really high. And I'd never had high blood pressure, not once through my pregnancy, not once before the pregnancy. And I was like, oh yeah, I know what this is. This is preeclampsia. I got to go to the hospital right now. <laughs> my dad's talking to me. He's like, it, you know, it's okay. Sometimes people just have a high average blood pressure. And I was like, uh-uh, mm -mm. my blood pressure is always under 120 over 80 like it's always like 116 over 70 something like all the time and i worked out all the time so i was like nah nah so i went to the hospital they admitted me i was super scared like i was really nervous they admitted me for three days they gave me the medications the magnesium i was put on the beta law they monitor my blood pressure like i think the thing tested like every hour um, yeah, so after the three days, I was discharged. I went home on labetalol and hydralazine. And I got home maybe a couple hours later, three hours later or something, my blood pressure skyrocketed again. I went back to the hospital, but this time they didn't admit me. They put me, they kept me in emergency and they gave me an Ativan. And that helped. So it brought my blood pressure down. It was like, okay, well, you know, I do have, you know, there it is some, pre, there is some preeclampsia, but I'm also having lots of anxiety. I mean, it was the coronavirus. My parents were were temporarily living in my house only. 
they were only living there to help me with the baby, but it's still a lot of people. The baby's father was there. I had a new puppy, the puppy was only three months. I didn't know what I was doing. It, there, just, there was everything going on, right? And now my blood pressure's high. And so now I'm really crazy because I'm checking my blood pressure like every 15 minutes. <laughs> like I still, I wish I knew where the logs were, but I have big, long logs of blood pressure readings. When I, like the time I took the medication, my blood pressure after that, like different notes and changes. So if you ever monitor your blood pressure, you want to notate things that you're doing in relation to blood pressure. Like when I would go for walks or work out, I would write down, I worked out, and then my blood pressure afterwards. Or when I took the medication, the time I took the medication and what time I took my blood pressure afterwards so I could see, cause I could see the trends and how things were working. And I didn't really like the meds. Um, the labetalol made me feel like my scalp was crawling. It was crazy. Other than that, I didn't feel anything from the labetalol, so I didn't mind it as much. But the hydralazine has um, rebound tachycardia, rebound increase in heart rate. So I didn't like that at all because it 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 really worked to to take my blood pressure down, but then my my heart is just beating super fast it was like in the 90s 100s and i'm just like laying down so that i didn't like that was rough for me i really changed my medication doses a lot because at first i was on hydralazine 25 and i was like no no i cut in half <laughs> i was titrating my medication to what worked for me because i mean i guess as a pharmacist I have the luxury of doing that because I know um, the doses and things and I know, you know, kind of how to work it. But I know that regular people are not going to do that. They probably wouldn't even feel comfortable. Um, so thank goodness, because I was tripping. So I had the preeclampsia for eight weeks and then it slowly went down. And I was so happy because I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have high blood pressure for my whole life. And I mean, just out of nowhere, high blood pressure. So I was like, whew, I got off the medications. Oh, but during the time I was on the medications, they put me on Zoloft or sertraline, which is an SSRI. It's an antidepressant used, that's used for anxiety. Very popular class of medication for anxiety and depression, um, first line therapy. And it was great for me because I didn't feel, I didn't feel any side effects whatsoever, nothing. Um, later on, I mean, I'm, I still take it sometimes, but I only take, I take the lowest dose, which is 25 milligrams. The highest dose I, I think I ever took was 50. I don't think I made it to 100. 100 is a lot of times the maintenance dose, but 50 worked for me until I realized later that it gave me sexual side effects, as in you can't like climax. So nobody wants that <laughs> so <laughs> I had to cut that down I cut it down 25 and it um worked fine but it took it takes weeks to actually get into your like to start working in your system um so because the serotonin has to build up in your brain and things like that so it didn't work right away I think it took like six weeks to like really start working and then everything started calming and then it was good <laughs> my parents thank god stayed with me for like those all that time because i was freaking out every day i didn't know what was happening like they were super helpful they were cooking and cleaning and taking help me watch the baby um yeah they were the best they were the best i don't know how people come home with the baby either by themselves or with their partner and do it Cause I was like, I don't care about this pandemic. I need you guys to come over and help me out here. <laughs> um, now on the second time around, I mean, I've kind of been there, done that, but every baby's different. So we'll see what happens. So anyway, I wanted to talk about taller anxiety today because I noticed that when my daughter gets really frustrated with something or she's, it's like she doesn't know what to do or how to feel about something, she'll start, I mean, right now she's three. So she's like in the older ages of being a toddler. A toddler is one and it's either to three or to four. So she is at the end of the toddler-ish years. 
Um, so now, I mean, she can she can talk really well. She can she can communicate better than when she was younger. But anyway, this morning I noticed that she was kind of frustrated. She was sleepy. I I, I usually get her dressed when she's asleep because she wants to go to bed so late. So I just let her sleep in as long as possible in the morning before school. So I got her dressed and then she is potty trained um, fully now. Thank God, that's, that's the best thing ever. Um, and so she had to go to the bathroom and then she was sitting there on her little potty and she was like, she's rubbing her hands together. And she does that sometimes when I, I, was, when I do her hair. She doesn't like her hair getting done. And um, she starts doing that. And I've seen her do it before and I was like, okay, she's frustrated. But today I just, I held her little hands and I just like rubbed them. And she actually let me, like sometimes she won't let me do things like that. Like I like she won't let me like give her massages, like you give babies massage, toddler massages, things like that. Like she's not really big like that. Like she'll want to be all up on me, but you know, when it comes to me relaxing her, she doesn't always let me do that. So anyway, she let me rub her hands and it calmed her and she she felt better. I talked to her very, with a very relaxed tone. I mean, I tend to talk with a relaxed tone anyway, cause you know, anxiety coaching. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then she felt better and then I felt better and it was, it was good stuff cause I don't want her to have anxiety. Um, because it's a lot, that's a lot. So let's talk about some toddler anxiety. Um, first, from the time they're one until, I mean, for the rest of their life, they're just, they're gonna increase their language and cognitive skills, right? But you know, one year old doesn't really talk. I mean, they make some grunts and they may babble, but they don't really talk very well. So they really can't communicate. Like you don't, you know, they're older, like they know they're not, you know, they're not under one. Um, so obviously, so, <laughs> So they're, you know, they continuously get more aware and more aware, but they, they cannot express themselves. You know, you'll see a young child, a toddler try, like they'll have tantrums, they'll cry, they'll cling to you, they may throw things, um, you know, as versus like an older kid, an older kid, you know, may show signs of anxiety, but you can, you, you, you can talk to them. Usually they, under, they understand more what's happening. Where a toddler, you can't really talk to them. They don't know really what you're talking about. Um, I mean, you should talk to them anyway, but it's not really as much rationalizing as it is encouraging. You know, I understand that this is hard for you. You know, um, we. You know, I know you're mad. You know, things like that. Because they start learning their emotions and everything. So. At this age, she can talk when she gets super, super frustrated. She definitely shows it in like physical ways. And that was, this is the first thing that I really, really noticed. I was like, I know what that is. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to nip that in the bud as much as possible. I haven't had her try breathing exercises or anything yet. Um, I don't know if she would understand what that meant. I'm going to try one day and see what she does. Um, but yeah, she'll probably think we're playing a game. I guess that's fine too. Breathing game. No, that's fine. Next is object permanence. So when she was younger, I mean, she knows object permanence now, but when she was between one and two, she did not. Object permanence is a child knowing that something is still there, even when they can't see it. So like when you leave them, at first, they, I mean, they don't know what's going on. They don't know if you're coming back. They don't know where you went. They don't know how long you've been gone. Like, they don't have any concept of that. You know, it's like you you try to, you, you help to teach them object permanence by like, putting things under like a blanket or a pillow and seeing, and, and eventually they start to realize that it's under there, even though they can't see it. Um, so toddlers tend to have separation anxiety, um, especially when, at the younger end because they don't they don't have a clue what's happening you drop them off at daycare and they don't know if you're coming back actually ocean didn't my, my daughter's name is ocean she didn't really care the first day of daycare 
she did not cry. I don't think she really realized. <laughs> she was probably, she was, I remember, I have a picture of her and she's just smiling. And I just think she was happy to be around other kids. Um, yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> she was fine. When she got a little older actually, because she started daycare at six, six months. When I went back to work, she had to go to daycare because my parents who are retired and would, would watch her, they live in the Inland Empire and I live in Inglewood. So that's a good little drive. And I knew a girl whose child went to the school. So she goes to a Christian school in Los Angeles and I love it there. I love it. It's actually preschool to through all the way through high school and I'm thinking about keeping her there. I don't know, it just depends. I mean, if she stayed till high school, that means we would have to pay every year for the rest of her, you know, time instead of her going to public school, which is free. So I don't know. It depends. But, you know, I, got, I can't put my child in the crazy public school, but some of them aren't that bad. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, there definitely was a time when she, I think when she was more in the one-year-old class, where she had a, a where she was having breakdowns when we would leave her but she got over that and then it happened again when she switched over from two to three you know those switches those big changes for kids can be hard and they need time they need people to help them get through the transition um because that's something we definitely learn how to do like to adapt to things as we age one to three not so much you know that's why we have bedtime routines we keep structured routines one way to help with anxiety in children is to keep as structured a routine as possible they are not always easy with change you know it's like how they have all those um you know milestones of where they start going to sleep regression when they learn a new skill like you know they crawl sleep regression they walk sleep regression they start talking sleep regression <laughs> it's like man every time every time they get better and things you think things are gonna might get a little easier nope you move back six steps um also they have well i kind of mentioned this with object permanence but they have limited communication so you're looking for toddlers to cry a lot you know they're running around they're they're falling on the floor um they're throwing things at you. They're holding on to your leg. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. They just know that they don't want mommy and daddy to leave or they just don't like what's happening at all. Um, they tend to have, they have specific fears and phobias that are different than other kids. Like kids may be afraid of the dark. They may be worried about monsters under their bed. You know, they may watch something, have a nightmare. Um, but toddlers tend to be scared of things that are more general, like loud noise. Like there was a time when she was super scared of motorcycles. I mean, she loves them now, but she didn't know. It's like one day they just like wake up. Like, you know, they hear all these things and I just, uh, you know, they, it probably doesn't really regu like um, register with them what they are. But then one day it's like, oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, I'm scared. She would be so scared of the motorcycles, loud cars, things like that. And I mean, the birds, the, the crows especially, because crows, you know, they make a crazy noise or caw. And it's like, there's a balance because you have to, you know, they're genuinely scared. They generally do not know what is happening. So you can't really be like, uh, it, don't be scared, it's nothing. But you can't coddle them also because, you know, they need to understand that this, you know, this is what it is. Like even now she'll, now she'll ask me, she'll say, she'll hear something. She'll be like, mommy, what is that? And I'll say, oh, it's a car or something. She'll be like, oh, okay. You know, or she's fine with it. But before it was crying, it was running to me. It was bad. You know, and at those times, just hug them, you know, let them run to you. Um, help them out a little bit, you know, you don't want to shield them from the outside, but 
you want to make sure to at least give them a hug and let them know, hey, you know, it's okay, it's okay. It's loud, I know it's loud, I know it's hard to hear that, but this is what it is, the car, or sometimes, you know, we would sit on the porch or stand on the porch and she would hear the cars and she would see the cars because, you know, they start seeing it and then they start seeing the vision with the sound and it comes together and it helps. Also, unfamiliar people and places. Like I said, they just, it's like all of a sudden their eyes are open. They're just like, where am I? I know my mom and dad. Who are these other folks? Um, what are all these sounds? What are, who, where are they taking me? Like, it just got crazy. But it, it didn't last very long. It, it lasted for a few months and then it was done. And then she was like, better. She did also have some scared of the dark, um, but she, that has just kind of gone on for a little while now, but it's not too bad. I bought her a flashlight, um, but you know, like between her being at her dad's and her being with me, um, like the house here is bigger, so it gets dark at night. I keep all the lights low. I've actually kept the lights low from the time she was born at night, you know, because you have to help them with, they don't know the difference between day and night. And also to keep the blue light down and to just soothe her and help her, like giving her baths and candlelight. Or like even now I have a lamp, like a colored lamp in the bathroom. I don't turn on the bathroom light at night. Um, she'll play in her room and have her independent playtime. And that is a was a lamp, a yellow light. Um, so it's not too harsh, but it is brighter than the dark baths that she still has. Like it, she, I don't know if she's ever really taken a bath here with me in light. <laughs> it's always dark. Um, so just remember that involvement, your parental involvement is really, really important for them. One day I'm gonna do a, um, a post on attachment styles. Attachment style is what your child will acquire from your relationship with them from the ages of zero to one, basically. Always remember, you can never spoil a newborn with too much attention or holding them too much. They need to be held as much as possible. Love on them, kiss them, look at them, touch them, hold them. They need that. They get their, when they have their, they, they grow their attachment styles. There's four of them. Um, and they kind of last throughout the rest of their life. And it's based on how they were when they were younger. So the attachment style that we have now cannot be changed, but you can be aware of them. And then, you know, if you're aware of something, then you can say, hey, this is probably just my attachment style. Let me reel it on in. Um, but yeah, so she has a very stable attachment style. I spent a lot of time holding her and being with her when she was from zero to one. Um, I was definitely a co-sleeping parent. It was, there was a time when she was in her crib for a good amount, for a good amount, like some months. But then she got, I remember she got sick. She had a fever. I mean, going back, she had, and her crib was not in the bedroom. Her crib was in another bedroom, it wasn't in my bedroom. So going back and forth and doing all that, yeah, no, <laughs> that didn't work out for me. So yeah, so we co-slept and I thought it was great. I loved it. I thought it was the best thing ever. Like now she still sleeps like on my arm or like right, right next to me. I mean, now it's a bit much, but still, I mean, if it's just me and her anyway, what difference does it make? She would have to sleep in her room and yeah. Then I worry about, is she hot? Is she cold? I'm checking on her. I have to keep the doors open. So enough about toddlers and anxiety because they're kids and everything. There's only so much we can do. But us as parents, we need to do better with controlling ourselves. Also, 
know that your toddlers are not responsible for you. A lot of times, like I've even done it. Like I'll say, can you do this for mommy? Can you be good for mommy? Can you do this for mommy? Um, like I'll be like, I'm having a hard day. Can you just <laughs> chill out, <laughs> you know? But it's not really for me to put that on her because she, first of all, she doesn't understand. She has no idea what I'm feeling. And I'm the parent. And as the parent, we need to take responsibility for what we are doing and how we are feeling. Just because we have a bad day doesn't mean that we can just go home and expect our toddler to just sit quietly and, you know, color a book or just be into a show on TV and, you know, not want to be a part of our lives because that's what they want really they're very clingy at this age they want all the attention they want to be entertained they want you to love on them they want to cuddle with you i mean they want you period all the time you know and again it, it gets hard it gets hard for us as parents we have responsibilities things we want to do but just remember at the end of the day they are a baby basically they are your child they have been into this world for less than five years and they're looking to you to show them how to act and how to be and if you're constantly showing them frustration and you know you're not dealing with the anxious thoughts that you feel best believe that they're gonna feel it you know you can do relaxing things with your toddler it's just they might not last that long like you could teach them to breathe or you know maybe have a short meditation moment where they sit with you for 30 seconds maybe 10 seconds <laughs> but every little bit counts and helps and um remember at the end of the day you're doing a great job they love you more than anything the moon and the stars you are their everything and you know hey we we are all in this together um if you need support reach out for support. If you need someone to help you, reach out for someone to help you. But, you know, let's let these little ones grow up and be able to, you wanna share that generational health. You wanna share that generational mental health of positivity and helping them to move on in life. Like a lot of mental health disorders are genetic. You know, someone's mom, may have something or my mom had anxiety um but she said it wasn't really bad it was pretty mild um it didn't last like super long for her and she's a super calm person i did not know that when i first started having anxiety and when i talked to her about it like later on years later probably she let me know and it was kind of like oh okay but she also didn't try to stop me from having it. She probably didn't think about it, but I'm thinking about it with Ocean. And, you know, if you haven't thought about it, think about it now. Um, your energy that your child feels and takes with them throughout the day. Like, I don't want her, you know, I feel like this is just the start. Her doing this is just the start of you know, things getting worse. Cause to me that means, okay, she's trying to cope with something. I don't know. She doesn't know what to do. So I need to be there for her to just hold her little hands and help to calm her down and let her know, you know, everything is okay. Or even if you don't like something that that's okay. Like she doesn't like when I do her hair. <laughs> she doesn't like when anyone does her hair. She doesn't want to get her hair washed. She doesn't want to get it done. She doesn't want any of it. Um, You know, and sometimes that's rough because she's a little girl and she has curly hair. Um, and yeah, you, you know, you got to get your hair done. Can't walk around all tangled and stuff. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, you know, I got to make sure to remember to always keep it together. And you know, as much as possible, there are some times when I cannot keep it together and I go into my bedroom and I close the door and I lock the door. And yeah, she'll want me. But I also know, well, at her age now, I mean, I wouldn't do that if she was like one. But, <laughs> but at three, like she can be around the house by herself. You know, everything is, the things that she likes to mess with that are dangerous, I baby-proof those, such as the cabinets. Um, but I, you know, I think you realize that 
as as your child gets older there's certain like you don't have to baby proof everything because all kids are different like some kids don't mess with certain things like she like those books back there never touches them she leaves them there she doesn't ever take them out of their stacks those but these um jump ropes right here she wants those like almost every day but they're weighted so they're really too heavy for her to really use but i just give them to her anyway but um yeah so you know i can leave her around the house the house is always locked and be fine so i know that if i'm having a crazy moment i can go in my room at least for a minute and just lay on the bed and take some deep breaths you know but that's all you know in your child so i mean do that if you need to take a break sometimes even if i put her in her stroller and we take a walk it gives me a moment because kids really like to be outside and it gives me a moment to maybe listen to some music to think while she's in her stroller just you know staring at stuff <laughs> um and it's just better for both of us but us as adults just have to be active in that don't think that telling your children to to shut up or be quiet or putting them in a corner just because simply because they are frustrating you is a good thing that is not a good thing like i don't usually take her places where she has to act out of her age for me like people be like oh let's go to dinner bring bring ocean i mean i'll go sometimes but i need to, i'm also prepared that she's probably going to run around and i need to be okay with that because she's three years old and what and what are my expectations for her that she's just going to sit there and be bored because i want her to sit there that's not okay i want her to be able to explore i don't want her to change that part of herself because i don't want to deal with it like that doesn't make sense you know like i don't take her to the movies because she doesn't even watch movies here at the house so if she's not going to sit through a two-hour movie at the house i'm not gonna take her to the theater i mean that makes absolutely no sense i don't know why people put their kids in these compromising situations where they're just going to be punished for just acting natural you know and it's fun i mean yeah you have to teach your kids certain things or whatever but it's really age appropriate and as kids get older they get more mature and they they act more accordingly but i mean she just turned three so she's you know been two for you know the last most of the time that i've taken her place i mean she's two years old you know and um you know don't feel pressured by other people to take your kids somewhere where it's an adult only situation bring bring ocean with you no because you're not watching ocean i'm gonna have to watch ocean and i have to make sure that i am mentally okay at that moment to sit with this child and she's gonna do what she wants to do i'll bring her ipad i have her coloring for her sometimes she doesn't want to do that or she'll do that for like an hour but if i'm sitting there for two i mean how long is dinner with your friends two hours average maybe two hours one and a half hours maybe three hours she sees five thousand things around us that she does she's just curious about she wants to just go to the bathroom just so she can get out off the table and run around i support that in my baby you want to be adventurous you, you baby girl you take that with you into your adulthood fearless all that i don't want to instill fear in my child i don't know why people feel like having them fear you is a great source of discipline because it's not my mother did not give did not have fear tactics for us like we weren't scared of her my dad we were scared of my dad but it also now our relationships are way different like i can always be open with my mom like she was she was not i mean yeah she got mad at me and punished me but she would like hit my hand or something like that like she wouldn't abuse me or talk down to me or call me names or anything like that and i didn't do that to her because why would i that's my mother i'm not going to disrespect her um you know and my dad decided that fear was what he wanted to put on us in order to keep us in line and now we're just not as close you know it just we just grew up separately because it, it was like after a while i got older i'm like a teenager and i'm like I'm not going to sit around fearing you like it's not a thing and i'm an adult now i'm gonna say what i want to say i'm not going to be disrespectful 
but I have my own opinions on everything. And you know, if we're gonna be close in life, then you have to understand that fear is not it. It's not it that you don't have. They don't. You don't have to sit around and talk down to a child in order for you to not be their friend. I hope that me and Ocean can be friends to an extent. Of course, I will be her mom and I will always make sure that she knows the right and wrong things to do. But I'm not gonna teach her, I'm not gonna act like she's 11 years old while she's three. Let's, come on now, we have, we have to make sure that we keep that in mind. Like the things that she does, running around and things like that are very age appropriate. If it's not age appropriate, that's one thing. That's something that we need to tackle. And if you don't know what's age appropriate for your child, just look into it. You can Google anything these days. Ask AI, chat GPT. What is age appropriate for a three-year-old? Like on her progress report from school, the thing she's supposed to master, like jumping up and down, jumping on one foot, skipping, knowing some ABCs, like, you know, colors and shapes. You know, it's, it's not like, if, she, if she's paying attention, if she's following rules in the playground, you know, it's not like if she's, I don't know, sitting for hours reading a novel or something like that. Like, that's not a thing. So as we deal with, you know, the anxiety from our own lives and we raise children, just keep in mind that we are the adults at all times. We are, all, we are the adults. They didn't ask to be here. We are showing them the way, the best way we can. So take the breaks that you need to take if you need to take them. Thank you so much for watching my podcast. If you have any questions, please send me a message. Um, I will add my, I guess my DM at the bottom um, for Instagram. Or if you want to get together and have an appointment, we can talk about anxiety. We can talk about children and anxiety. We can talk about all that. Um, yeah. So see you in the next video.